with the topic a reading like a write a geographical note on Halloween storm, there are three things that you have to consider. The first part is a, of course, this is a topic that I've been asked from nowhere, at least the terminology is concerned. In essence, the topic will be easy. The second is that it is a note. And the third is that it's a geographical note. Now, when exactly it is made that it is geographical note and there are such specificities that have to be followed. Now, taking a complete look at it, how is it that the topic goes on to be? What makes it being asked as a topic here? To begin with, the first thing first there. Why is it that the topic was asked there? The topic was asked because it was in news. Eh? Halloween is a term that keeps on getting itself refreshed eh? and it has been getting itself refreshed all the way from 1991. And this year, uh, that means uh, 2020, October, November, it got itself refreshed eh? once again. And that was reason number one. There was a second reason that was a uh, in the academic circles, from where the topic has been lifted all in all, there has been a saying eh, and eh, there is a discussion that has been ensued in those places eh, that eh, a space weather does affect the earth. Eh. So if it is eh, that Halloween storm refers to anything like a solar storm, then it is space weather that is going to be affecting the weather of the earth. Eh. That is a, that's the reason why exactly it was asked. Eh. Second is a scope, and we are going to be talking about the scope of almost all of the topics and all of these answers. It's very mark switching because it comprises three separate sections to be dealt with. That is the solar storm, blizzards, and the third is tropical storm. So when you're going to be writing a short notes on all three of them and geographical short notes along with a diagram, then this is a topic, and of course we are dealing it in a manner which if you can if you can go to deal with it or if you have dealt it with in such a manner, then uh, you are always going to be having a possibility of scoring a 85% marks eh, all in all in this case. Eh, because these are such type of topics eh, where your marks are not going to be deducted. And eh, some of you may be surprised 85%, but then eh, that is the type of marks that you're going to be getting it in geography. It's a different matter that not too many, many people are going to get it. Eh, and because of some obvious reason, they do not going to reach uh, the quality and the standards uh, and the yardsticks that have been laid out by the Union Public Service Commission in this case. Uh. So it's very, very marks switching. Approach is that, of course, this is the approach that you have to follow in order to get this marks. Uh. It has to be scientific. It cannot be so called geographical because uh, it's not a topic drawn from geography. It's a topic that is going to be drawn from a uh, Earth sciences eh? and consequently it has it goes on to give you ample scope eh, to, to compact its language. Eh? And when we're going to be talking about compacting the language, that means eh, we are concentrating on the use of eh, terminologies eh, which will go on to help you compact the language. Eh? It is only with the help of terminology that can go on to oust at least some five or six words eh, which goes on to help you make it eh, a compact, eh, congregated also. The limitation in this case is that if you take it from an angle from an angle of geography, it is a scientific topic and it has to be written in a scientific manner. All in all, the nature of the first paper has been that it has been by and large scholarly, it has been by and large academic in nature, and consequently it has to be approached in a scientific manner. The problems that the students are going to be facing in this type of topic is a correlating and classifying and also accumulating what all that can go to comprise what is going to be called by the name of Halloween storms. And of course the source book and other aspects are going to be part of it. That is you can always go to understand it from where exactly the topic can be answered of sorts. There are uh, to begin with it it's a geographical note. So geographical note goes on to become simple in this case. In this case it is simple. That is a first introduction, secondly the classification, the third is a within the classification the impact origin and impact of it. For example, that is the introduction part of it, meaning of it, and then the classification that will go to comprise of solar storms, blizzards, and tropical cyclones, and how is it that they originate, what is going to be the effect of it. So Halloween refers to a particular period. To begin with its introduction, it refers to a particular period. A particular period of a time, particularly we are going to be talking about October and November. 
and it has been associated with superstition. Now, it's a surprising aspect. Why is it that this type of a question can at all be asked here in geography? So, it has a, a particular superstition tradition, some aspect related with spirituality as well. But then, at the same time, it's a storm. It's a storm that is going to be fierce, very, very lethal of sorts. And it's going to be generally of an unknown origin. And because it's going to be of unknown origin and it's going to be destructive, that's the reason it has been given the name Halloween of sorts. So, so Halloween storm can go on to be a gale force, it can be a solar storm, it can go on to be a tropical storm, it can go on to be a blizzard. And when we're going to be talking about a gale storm, gale is an American word all in all. So that means uh, it is talking about uh, a type of a storm that goes on to be having very high velocity winds uh, in this case. Uh. So first is about the classification and from the perspective of classification, it is comprising of solar winds and solar storm being one of them. And that's what you're going to be seeing on the screen. That is for the purpose of uh, having a uh, help you gain a concept of how is it that a solar storm can go on to apply. Obviously, this is a diagram that you cannot go on to make it, but then we are always going to be referring to some of these diagrams that you can go on to make as well. That's first part. The second part is, uh, of course, the solar flare. We are going to be talking about this. So, one of them is going to be a solar storm and a series of solar flares and that is uh, an ejection from the coronal mass of the sun. That means we are going to be talking about uh, how is it that the sun emits uh, certain things uh, out of its corona that goes on to get uh, the filament uh, when it is storm goes on to take place on the sun. Uh, the filament of it goes on to get self detached uh, and how is it that it is going to start traveling to the earth. Uh, and this is something that happened in uh, 2003. Now these storms, uh, they are going to begin after solar maximum that is uh, uh, two to three years after solar maximum when uh, sun is actually in a position to give and liberate all of its uh, energy and uh, it was uh, during this activity that there is a as we're going to be talking about after solar maximum solar activity goes on to be on decline but by that time it looks like uh, and i say it looks like that the energy seems to have traveled all the way to the earth so during this unusually quiet Quiet has been in a, within quote unquote that is inverted commas. A few sunspots are going to be visible, and there has been an outbreak of something like some 17 of them. And that is how it goes on to take place. This is how where the coronal mass goes on to see its ejection that has been ejected, and that leads to a stream of electrons and a plasma that goes on to collide with the earth and as it goes on to collide with the earth the earth is going to be shielded by its magnetosphere which goes on to protect the whole of the earth but by that time such type of solar eruptions have a potential to damage satellites that can go on to collide with the polar atmosphere and they can go on to lead to formation of of course when they can go on to collide with uh, the satellites they can go on to destroy the satellites when they can go on to collide with the polar atmosphere uh, they are responsible for uh, leading also to uh, to the formation of auroras in this case uh, that is the basic definition of it when you want to be coming on to the its impact uh, how is it that it goes on to impact it uh, this is a picture that we go on to be talking about of the magnetosphere which goes on to be having a doubt not shape which goes on to cover the whole of the earth and the entire of the earth goes on to remain protected for it from it. So the sun's magnetic field lines are then stressed. All of these are stressed. The coronal mass is ejected and they, it goes on to get itself ejected and moves towards the earth at enormously high speed. It's like a blast. That is, it's like a bomb blast that takes, takes place and you're going to feel that type of a blast. So, an enormous explosion of the sun's surface goes on to take place here, and uh, billions of tons of electrified gas and subatomic particles uh, are uh, sent into space and imagine the speed, 8 million kilometers per hour of this speed. And this impact is going to be, of course, uh, if it is that an aircraft comes in its path, then the aircraft's route has to be rerouted. It's, it's sometimes going to be in a, maybe equatorial regions when that goes on to get affected in polar regions as well. So aircrafts are asked to take a different route all in all. Second is we have talked about that is the satellites are going to be affected. 
because the earth's magnetic field may go to getting deflected and of course it does go to deflect it otherwise uh, there was no way that we would have been uh, existing in this region at all and uh, aurora because uh, aurora formation take can go to take place all the way to the southern portion of it uh, that means uh, as far south as uh, from the polar region towards the equatorial region uh, aurora goes on to be something that is going to be spectacular in all of those type of places yeah. these are the effects of this type of a, a solar particle and of course uh, people have seen such type of a solar flare uh, and the impact of it uh, even in mediterranean region and as far as texas now i have lived in that place i know this place i have studied in that place and i know that uh, that is a uh, it has been visible and it was an spectacle of sorts at one point of time second is a blizzard now blizzard is a very strong cold wind we are going to be talking about bitterly cold that means the temperature inside can go on to be minus 40 45 degrees centigrade as well it's bitterly cold true cold accompanied by masses of powdery snow it's not that it goes on to rain what it does is that it lifts the snow particles from the surface and then goes on to blow it away so it's a powdery snow ice crystal with very poor visibility so poor eh, that you cannot go to see anything at all and if at all you go on to get in trapped in a blizzard eh, with a uh, snow particles all around you all around you what you going to observe is snow white snow particles here there everywhere and that is called as a white out if there are going to be multiple reflections within it when the sun is going to be sh shining eh, then all these multiple reflections go on to affect your eyes eh, and that is going to be called as black out or such eh. so it is going to be in the polar or high altitude conditions eh? and it is going to be derived from northwest gales experience in the us in winter most in that place eh? it is going to be having two sources one of them is northwest gale and the second is eh, the rupturing of eh, what we call as eh, the arctic vortex and that's the type of eh, of visibility that you going to find eh, when there is a blizzard that affects the whole of the region and you can go to see that that is in a blizzard condition eh, uh, to explain that part eh, the whole thing goes on to become murky and eh, within minutes eh, your car may be completely buried in heaps of eh, ice in this case eh. so much so that eh, you may have to spend eh, something like some 12 13 hours of a time within ice itself eh. and eh, also that if you have to sp spend that much amount of time your cars are naturally allowed to be equipped eh, to deal with such type of a situation as you can go on to see it, there are heap, that is going to be under heaps of snow we are giving it not exactly that you can go to make in your answer but this is an explanation of the topic eh, that we going to make it easy for you to answer this question the third is going to be tropical cyclone now tropical cyclone is a, a warm core vortex circulation as we say the word is going to be warm core the core is going to be warm it's in a form of a vortex that's how the winds going to blow it's a warm core vortex circulation in tropical areas that is going to be within 23 and a half degree north and 23 and a half degree south eh? it's it originates with a small diameter its diameter is going to be something like some 500 km eh? and it eh, is circular in shape eh? like if you can go to take a look at it from space it goes on to show you a spiral galaxy type of a shape eh? that is going to be circular in shape it's not anything eh, like a v shape inverted v shape or so is circular is going to be in shape eh? it has a minimum surface pressure which is going to be called as the within the eye the eye is going to be having eh, that much amount of minimum surface pressure accompanied by some very high velocity wind eh, which can go to be some of the gusts can go to be 340 km per hour of speed as well that means some of this gust not always eh, that is constantly going to blow some of this gust going to be having it eh. and then all of this air i mean the air that is going to be moving eh, normally it is going to be about 180 km per hour of speed and that is going to be eh, spiraling inwards in this case eh. that is all of this air is going to be eh, spiraling inwards eh. tropical cyclones are going to be the result of some trigger uh, trigger that means eh, it originates eh, because of eh, some type of trigger as you can go to understand this part eh, we are going to be talking about eh, some type of a trigger uh that means uh, most of the conditions can go on to be present like a warm sea condition eh? if you have a corvidis force eh? you are in a tropical condition eh? 
So there is a triggering force that allows the air to rise. And as the air goes on to rise, it allows it to circulate. That is, it goes on to entrap a good amount of moisture and the temperature of the ocean must be warm enough eh, so that it goes on to lead to a good amount of entrapment of this moisture. Moisture means energy because that is going to be latent heat of energy. So the air rises and as the air rises, it starts eh, circulating because it is of course going to be affected by the Coriolis force in this case eh, and this is the way that it starts eh, getting itself eh, circulating all in all. So it is the result of a certain type of a factors which are responsible for a formation of it aided by what we are going to be calling a pre-existing low level disturbance. Now all in all as you can go to see it, this language is going to be very very compact for you and that is the type of a language that you are also expected to be writing in this case as well. The tropical cyclone is going to be characterized, it has an eye that is going to be in the center, that is going to be the eye. It has an eye that is the central part of the cyclone where all of these winds are going to be moving in a spiraling manner and the winds are moving in a very very fast manner. The winds move with the storm that means as the cyclone that is this is the circulation and while it goes into circulate it keeps on moving. If it goes into circulate here it keeps on moving keeps on moving in a from one direction to another direction and most of this direction is going to be from a, from east to north westward. I repeat it from east to north westward. That is the direction that it goes on to require and that is the direction that it, with which it goes on to move as well in this case. We are going to be talking about this eye and that is going to be the central part of it and that is where the wind is going to be subsiding. It is a region of a very calm condition. It is not going to be very very turbulent in this case at all. And all the winds that have risen that go on to find themselves outflowing on towards the other. Because if they do not go on to outflow, their whole of the moisture laden air will be entrapped, and this entrapment will go on to lead to the built up of the energy. And of course, if this energy would have been built up, then the amount of destruction would have been much, much, much more than what you are going to see normally in a tropical cyclone. These tropical cyclones, of course, because they are going to be associated with some very high velocity winds. So they go on to bring winds in excess of 200 km per hour and of course they are going to be accompanied by what we are going to be calling it as storm surges. Storm surges are that the water, uh, the waves go on to become very very strong. They start striking the entire of the coastal region with a very high velocity and ferocity as well. That means they keep on storming, keep on colliding, keep on colliding and that is going to be called a storm surge. Of course, the amount of rainfall is very very high that is largely because so much amount of moisture has got in craft eh, and the moisture goes into rise ultimately it goes into fall and it can go on to cause damage to the buildings and eh, of course agriculture as well. The fields go on to get flooded because within one single hour it can go on to pour so much amount of rainfall and within one single day the tropical cyclones are capable of pouring so much amount of rainfall that the region affected may not have received that much amount of rainfall in the entire of the year also. That is going to be its impact and that is what we are going to be concerned with in this case. And having talked about it, there are three aspects that you have to note. We have talked about the compactness of the language. What are the diagrams that you were supposed to draw? One of the diagrams that was how is it that the winds are going to be affecting, solar winds are going to be affecting the earth magnetosphere. And how is it that they are going to get deflected out of magnetosphere? That is one diagram that you had to draw. Now in trying to draw this diagram, you have to take care of the fact that you do not go on to make any major mistake because when you are going to draw a diagram, it is good because it is going to be mark switching. But it is not good because if you are going to make mistakes and major mistakes, that goes on to show you. That is like when you go to wear a cloth and someone goes on to feel that well, your body may be very, very good, very well checked. It's, it's not that you go to rip your clots apart out of your body to show that your body is actually not good. Diagrams are actually like that. That is one diagram. And second is in tropical cyclone, you have to make one of those diagrams, the first diagram that we've shown you, that is how is it that the gear goes into a spiral outwards and while it has gone converge at the surface. These are the two diagrams that you were supposed to make in this. Otherwise, if you have made Taking all of these type of precautions, there is no way that you can go on to get less than something like some 85% marks out of this topic. To have more such discussions and analysis, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos.